A split interval chord is a type of added note chord that includes both diatonic and chromatically altered versions of the same interval type. This example shows a C major chord with split thirds. That is, it includes both the major third of C, E, and the minor third of C, E flat. The inclusion of both thirds results in a dissonant and conflicted sonority, one that is neither major nor minor, but that has sonic features of both. There is no standard notational convention for these chords, though a commonly used practice is to include the basic chord symbol with the parenthesized exclamation mark and an Arabic numeral indicating the split interval. The three in this case denotes the inclusion of both major and minor thirds in the chord. While split thirds are the most common example of this chord, other split intervals are possible, including split roots, split fifths, and split sevenths, among others. The split intervals are often spaced further apart, rather than right next to each other, to achieve greater clarity in the sonority. Though closer spacings do occur. Multiple split intervals can be combined in a single chord, as in the first bar of the last movement of Berg's Opus 5. The double split intervals give this chord an ominous, bell-like quality that sets the tone for the movement. These chords can also occur in inversion, with the split interval occurring in the bass, as is the case at the end of the fourth measure of Scriabin's Prelude, Opus 74, Number 2. This chord, a first inversion D major with split thirds, heightens the quality of the split interval by placing them in the outer voices. This chord then moves to the tonic chord, F-sharp, with split thirds. By including split intervals in the chord of resolution, the composer achieves a sense of conflict or ambiguity. Looking back at some early examples of split interval chords, we can trace a clear path to modern day usage. In Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor, here taken from Busoni's transcription, we encounter a C-sharp, fully diminished seventh chord with split roots. In this case, the split root, D, is a clear pedal point in the bass. By placing the split interval in the bass, the composer gives this chord an emphatic, dissonant quality. In this passage, the opening bars of the second movement of Beethoven's Sonata Op. 14 No. 1, we encounter a rather dissonant simultaneity in the seventh bar. This sonority, with split sevenths over a B bass, is clearly the result of contrapuntal motion in the outer voices. The A sharp in the tenor voice is a clear lower chromatic neighbor to the surrounding Bs, while the A in the melody is the chord's dominant seventh. Though at the time these sonorities were fleeting, composers were gradually tuning their ears to them. By the late 19th century, composers were placing more emphasis on split intervals, as can be heard in the opening section of Liszt's La Lugubre Gondola which deploys split members for each note of the accompaniment's A-flat augmented triad. Though the split intervals are emphasized by both rhythmic stress and metric placement, the composer is still compelled to resolve each split member to its nearest chord tone. This would not be the case by the turn of the 20th century, as heard in the fourth piece from Ravel's Miroir, Alvarado de Gracioso. Here the split thirds are heard in parallel with the left hand's pattern, giving the passage a lively, bright quality. By this time, composers no longer felt the need to resolve split chord members, but would use them as coloring agents in their expanding harmonic palette. By the second decade of the 20th century, split interval chords were taken to new levels of expression. 
In the second piece of Schoenberg's Sex Kleine Klavierstücke, multiple split intervals are used on more distant harmonic structures, the diminished triad of measure 6 and the augmented triad of measure 9. In contrast with the example by Liszt, where split members of the augmented triad were heard successively resolving to their non-split neighbors, Schoenberg deploys the three split intervals concurrently and as the final chord of the piece. Here, the tonal gravity that allows for split chord members is barely perceptible, a clear example of Schoenberg's emancipation of dissonance. The chord that opens the dance of the young maidens from Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is nearly as well known as the piece itself a polychordal E-flat 7 over F-flat major that can be heard as an E major 7 add 13 chord with two split members, or as an E-flat 7 chord with three split members. The passage is completely devoid of melody or counterpoint, relying instead on rhythm, dynamics, registration, instrumentation, and harmonic density for its brutal effect. Split interval chords would later be taken up by jazz musicians, most frequently in the form of altered dominance. In Art Tatum's 1953 recording of Body and Soul, he punctuates the opening phrase with a colorful G7 sharp 5 flat 9 sharp 9. A chord with two split intervals, roots and thirds. This chord emphasizes the goal of the back cycle dominance heard before, and acts as a dominant 5 to the opening measure supertonic or 2 chord. Chords with split intervals were later used by rock artists like Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and jazz rocker Steely Dan, as heard in measure 6 of 1977's Deacon Blues. Here, the split third, G, as well as the D below it serve as a common tone pivot from the previous E-flat major 7th, and to the succeeding G6 chord. In Chick Corea's 1982 arrangement of 500 miles high, his Scriabin influence shows through at the downbeat of the fifth measure, where he plays split octaves, then moves the inner voices down in parallel to split thirds, alluding to a back-cycled F-sharp 7 chord resolving to a B7 sharp 9. That so many musicians have used these chords throughout the previous centuries is a testament to their expressiveness and versatility. The ways they can function in today's harmonic practice are as varied as the minds and ears of modern musicians. Thanks for watching. If you have suggestions for other musical concepts, please leave them in the comments below.